Well, <coughs> hello and thank you for uh, hanging around before the poster session. We're going to be switching gears a little bit here. My name is Gaston Hoffre. I am a PhD candidate at Texas a and University. And uh, so with the use of next-gen sequencing, now we are continuing to understand the consequences of hybridization. So uh, for example, when two species hybridize, and there can be some genetic barriers that can appear within these hybrid populations. And then after a while, these hybrid populations can become an independent species. <coughs> Another consequence is when there's extrinsic or intrinsic selection against hybrids. So that can allow with over time to reinforce the existing barriers that exist in the, these two parental species. <coughs> Another important consequence is introgression of specific traits. So for example, the yellow plumage in these, in these birds can introgress through the hybrid zone to the other uh, species. So introgression can be phenotypically and it also can be genomic. So um, ancient hybridization in humans has have allowed us to have some percentage of Neanderthal or Denisovan genome in our cells. Mm -hmm. So hybrid zones often have two types of, of shapes. When the environment is patchy and these two popul uh, parental populations, uh, parental species are overlapping, <coughs> then the hybrid zone can have a mosaic type of shape. So when you see the frequency between one parental species to another, it changes along the transect. When the environment changes smoothly from one parental species to another, then the hybrid zone generates a clinal change. So this is gonna be a cline. And if there is intrinsic or extrinsic selection acting on these hybrids, then you have this tension zone where the cline is pretty steep and there's a rapid change between one parental species to another. So this is exactly what I'm interested in, in studying to, to answer my questions. And geographic clients are very powerful analyses to detect uh, portions of their genome that are under selection or are highly progressing. So uh, you plot the overall genome, um, genomic hybrid index over a transect, over distance, and then you can compare different portions of their genome to this hybrid index cline. However, it's, it has a little bit of, of, of problems because drift alone can generate um, outliers. So this is something I'm working on, this is a simulation, and just in 100 individual population size, sometimes you can get outliers that, uh, sorry, not outliers, you can get the expected uh, cline in, in some genomic regions. However, sometimes you can get these genomic regions that are outliers. However, there's no selection going on right now. It's purely, purely drift. And this can happen even if I increase the population size to a thousand individuals, right? So taking this into account, I still want to use this analysis in my, in my model system, which is this charismatic fish, Hypophorus birchmanii and Hypophorus malinche. So I want to detect candidate targets of, of selection in this hybrid zone. So as you can see, these two fish are a bit different. Malinche will have this extension in the caudal fin, this is the, the sword. Uh, Birchim and I have a very reduced sword and they have big dorsal fins, they have a bigger body than Malinche. When they hybridize, the hybrids have an intermediate phenotype and sometimes they can express transgressive phenotypes. So this is a very um, interesting model to, to use. And for that, I have collected these, um, all these populations here in, in my country in Mexico in the Eastern Sierra Madre Mountains, specifically right here, that's where I have two independent clients. This has been a very ex extensive collection over three years of a little bit of sweat, blood, and tears. And uh, ask me later about how I got 
natural piercing after falling down the mountain. Um, but I survived, so I collected all these, I collected a lot of individuals from these two independent streams. So this is a very cool thing. So I got to collect um, two clients, and on the high altitudes of these clients, we found Hypophorus malinche. And then, on the lower altitudes, we found, we found Hypophorus birchmanni. And then in between, we can find these hybrids. And this is not only in two uh, rivers, this is in seven rivers, but I want to defend, so I'm just going to focus on two. Um, so, these rivers are also very um, structured. So there's a lot of genetic barriers along, along the altitudinal plane, even for crazy scientists to, to get to these sites. As, as you go down the river, these barriers become less and less. And then on low altitudes, the rivers are quite broad with a uh, high amount of water. So my expectation for these hybrid zones is not that there's gonna be a smooth change from one particular species to another. Instead, since we know that there's a lot of intrinsic selection in these hybrids, it's gonna be more like a tension zone, a quick change from one particular species to another. And then, if there's certain parts of the genome that are under selection, there's gonna be quite the deviation from the expectation. So the client center where the 50% individuals are gonna be is gonna be shifted in these genomic regions. And it can be in, in, in any other direction. So for that, I have collected 800 individuals, extracted DNA out of them, do TM5 libraries for next-gen next -gen sequencing uh, to 1x coverage, and then use HMM ancestry assignments. So basically, for all these uh, genomic regions, I assign ancestry using two of these parental species genomes, mapping all of my individuals to their genomes. And then with those ancestry probabilities, I um, selected some loci and then continued with the geographic line analysis to, to detect these outliers. So uh, this is one of the clients, this is the northern client, and as you can see, this is a quite change uh, from one parental species to another. Very interestingly, all these localities down here, we used to think that they were pure Birchmanni, and now we cannot go and collect them because they are admixed uh, Birchmanni. Um, <coughs> the client center is right here at 788 meters, and if we compare this client with the southern client, one striking thing is that the, this client center, it's not at the same altitude, it's a little bit lower, so these two rivers have a different change in, in, in the client, which I didn't expect that actually. <coughs> um, so then we know that we can see that they have a tension zone type of shape because there's a lot of BDMI uh, uh, <coughs> incompatibilities in this, in this system. However, I can still see some outliers. So this is, let me walk you through this graph over here. This is the chromosomes. This is the hybrid index client center. This is the 50% overall genome hybrids. And each one of these dots is a particular genomic region. And as you can see, the VA is from, from the hybrid index client center. So, so these are highly introgressed from Birchmanni to Malinche. And on the, other, on the other hand, these guys are gonna be introgressed Malinche to, to Birchmanai. One thing is that there's a high amount of introgression downstream, which is what we expect since there's asymmetric migration just by gravity, water's flowing down, right? Mm -hmm. What blows my mind is all these outliers that they're introgressing from Birchmanai to Malinche to high altitudes. And this is also happening in the other climb. So we have a lot of integration happening upstream the same on outstream. So one of the things I want to do, I know that drift can also uh, make these outliers appear. However, I can find common outliers between these two clients and then further analyze if they are actually under selection. So for example, these outliers, common outliers in chromosome 13, look something like this. This is the hybrid <coughs> index, this is the northern client. And as you can see, this, this genomic region in chromosome 13 is highly <coughs> introgressed Birchmanni into Malinche. If we look at the same thing 
in the southern climb, we can see the high reading index climb and the high integration of these genomic regions. Again, I want to stress out that these are independent rivers and I'm looking at the same pattern in these two in the climbs. Furthermore, I'm collaborating with Dr. Molly Schumer and Dr. Dan Powell and we're, we can look also at QTLs, for example, the black coloration in the sort. And you can see that there's also deviation from the high PD index. So it's introgress from Malinche to Birsman at this time in both climbs as well. If we look at the SOAR extension, right here, this QTL has also even extensive introgression from Malinche to Birsman in both climbs, even more, ex uh, more drastic in the northern climb than the southern climb. So uh, for future steps, I want to look at how DMIs are looking in these in these clients, in these two clients. And it, once I get all these common outliers between these two rivers, I want to see if there's any particular genes in these in these outliers, that, um, and then check for recombination rates in these outliers. I want to know that they're not false positives. So I want to take that out, and then compare simulations to control for false positives as well. So uh, there's a lot of people to, to thank for this for this project, specifically my advisor, Gil Rosenthal, uh, my committee member, Hugo Miller, Jim Sai, Kira Delmore, my lab mates, Dan Powell, and Mateo Garcia, which all these collections won't, will have been possible without them. Dr. Molly Schumer and Dr. Alexis Sergipar and Dr. Phil and Alfaro who helped me a lot to do all this extensive molecular work. And Dr. Heath Blackmon, who's also helping me with the simulations and the power to generate all these, all these analyses. Clemente Hernandez, which is a local in these field sites that I'm working, also helped me a lot to get to all these remote sites. Without his help, I won't be able to collect all these amount of individuals. And of course, my funding sources. And with that, I will take any questions. So the center for this climb is right at this right at this point, and there's some generic um, big waterfalls happening here. However, in this other other climb, in the southern climb, the big waterfalls are over here, and then here there's more mostly ripples, um, but not big waterfalls. The climb center for this climb is at this at this point. So no, they don't line up with generic barriers. So with the, uh, the high-elevation species, are the uh, populations in the different rivers very closely related, or are they pretty different, the, the populations themselves? And so these guys, are they... Yeah, are, are they very similar genetically, or are they very close, or are they... Yeah, similar? actually, they are quite... We think that there are, there's going to be... There's a lot of inbreeding depression in these in this highland species uh, compared to the, to the lowland species. So the uh, sort QTLs have introgressed down into Birchmai. Do uh, Birchmai have the sort? They have a small sort, and even some of them express some coloration. Um, they don't have it as long, so maybe like a like a knobby the sort. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. You